Hi gamers and developers and welcome to another GDT vlog. Uh, on today's vlog we're going to talk about Game Off uh, 2022 and we have two team members uh, from our team here and I will present them in a bit. First I'm going to talk a little bit about the jam. So uh, the jam is a, an annual game jam, a typical game jam uh, that challenges folks to build a game based on a theme. And this year's theme was cliché. And um, the jam lasted one month and now we're going to talk a little bit with the team to understand what their developing process was. So uh, the game developed by these guys is Cliché Dungeon, Cliché Dungeon and uh, well, I'm going to let you present uh, yourselves and tell me what you did on the jam and uh, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Romulo Kaidos and uh, I was... Uh, programmer in the jam. I did something, uh, some things uh, that involved the game mechanics and and all that. <laughs> Hi, Diogo Mendonça. I'm mainly a programmer. I did some sprite work for it too, mainly just placeholder sprites and, you know, something to make do because we didn't really have an artist on the team. Yeah. <laughs> um... We had to improvise. Yeah, the team uh, had one more team member, uh, the, the other team member was José Cotileiro, who did uh, most of the art, so he was the lead artist, but he also programmed because that is uh, his main role on, our, uh, yeah, on GDT. So, how many gems did you guys participate before this one? So, this was my first gem, so I'm quite a rookie in this. Well, it was my third, so I took more of a lead role as, as I had some experience doing this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my next question for you is about the game. So do you want to talk, us, uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, your game? What was your game about? Well, it's a uh, roguelite. It generates a random dungeon. You go there, you, uh, you control this little guy who has a gun, and you can find items that power you up, find other guns. There's a lot of enemies for you to fight in, and you have to complete that uh, dungeon three times to win the game. Okay, so how did it relate to the theme of the gen the theme of cliché? Well, everything in it is, is based on a cliché. You have, like, they gave us a list of 4,000 clichés, the, the gem organizers. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there were things like, let's split, we made the slime thingy based on that, that when you mm -hmm. kill it, splits in two. There's another uh, fire on my belly, we made a flamethrower. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we had another one uh, called uh, uh, Gum Up the Works, I think that was it. And we made a gun that when you shoot it, the bullet just bounces off the walls a lot of times. We had the bats in our belfry, we made some bats, mm -hmm. we had just... Okay, so based on that list that uh, the gem organization gave you. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. How did you guys come up with the idea? If you want to maybe tell me about it so a little bit. We, we were discussing uh, different uh, themes for mm -hmm. the, the cliches and then we tried to pull something out of the box. Instead of focusing on one cliche only, we tried to gather as much as we could and create a game based on the theme cliche with a lot of cliches. Okay, so a completely cliche game. Yeah, <laughs> okay, much. I like that. So, uh, like I mentioned before, the gem lasted about one month. So, what was your strategy to develop the game in that amount of time? Well, we had some plans made at the start, but uh, well, our team initially was five people, and two days later it was down to three. Yeah. <laughs> so, we had to cut something short. But uh, yeah, we generally started by, okay, let's divide this into someone makes the dungeon, someone makes the enemies, someone makes the player character. And by the end of it, we were just like, okay, match, match that all up yeah. together and let's see what it... Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned the thing about the team because I'm, I'm going to ask uh, about that in a little bit. But these guys had a team of five people and unfortunately, two of them had to leave at the gym um, early for... Uh, various reasons and they had to struggle with doing the art themselves because they're all programmers uh, <laughs> so we're gonna talk about that a little in a, in a little bit but uh, just a preview for you guys to understand what was the their process so uh on to the the gem itself uh what did you learn throughout the gem 
each one of you guys? Well, uh, since this was this was my first jam, um, I never had much um, contact with the game developing, and uh, we use Unity, and I I never had used Unity before, so I learned how to start to code in Unity, start to work uh, with it, and that's basically it. What I learned, I learned how to use a little bit yeah. of Unity. Yeah, about you too. Well, I started by working on the dungeon generator, so that was a very good learning experience. And then I also had to learn how to improvise some sprites because, well, I really didn't have much of a choice there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's that's very nice. So my next question for you guys, I think I already know the answer, but uh, what would you have done differently? Well, we should have maybe considered, like, right after losing all the people, we should have tried to get together yeah. and rethink the whole process, maybe. And uh, the other main thing we should have done was submit the g early for the jam, because we had this <laughs> little issue where by the time we looked at the clock, it was like 10 seconds past the deadline and submissions were closed and we hadn't submitted before, which was just a rookie mistake, inexcusable. Yeah. And it was very disheartening. You just spend a whole month working on this game, you go to submit it and oops. Yeah, well, that's uh, an early advice for you guys. Please submit early versions of the game so this doesn't happen. Uh, but it's okay. I, I know you guys didn't submit, but that's fine. Uh, we did end up submitting. You did end up submitting. We, uh, by well, when uh, when it we noticed that it was past the deadline, we went to the. Ah, and you talked with the. the we we okay, talked okay. with the organizers. I sent them an, an email. Uh, I think the deadline was at about uh, half past nine. Kind of. Yeah, uh, eight thirty-seven. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Half past okay, nine. so you did manage to Half past nine. At like uh, one in the a.m. in the morning. A.m. is always in the morning. One in the morning, like I received an email from them with a link telling us that if we use that, we could submit. So it was yeah. nice. Okay, so that's very nice. Another advice, talk with the team of the gem if this happens, because sometimes it works. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, okay, besides that, um, I know you, you guys had your struggles with artists, but what was you missing in your team? If you had started with only uh, the three of you guys, what was missing in your team? Well, an artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true, that's true. I think we, we should focus more on what we, uh, on strength, strengths of each person mm -hmm. and then uh, try to do to push the, those strengths um, earlier and then focus uh, the three of us focus in, in the art mm -hmm. part I guess okay so yeah. we could have like um, I can we can say a better man management of the okay that's th that's a, a good thinking I also agree with you uh, you can al always use the strengths of the person to uh, maybe enrich the, the parts where you're good and work together in the parts where you're not good. So I agree with that. I think that's, that's good advice. So uh, what were your worst moments during the jam? <laughs> well, when you go to submit and notice that, oops, <laughs> <laughs> it was five seconds ago, yeah. too bad. And we still had like three or four hours where we didn't know that we would be able to submit, so we were just completely devastated. Mm -hmm. So how did you deal with the process of two people leaving the team, being good that one of them uh, was the artist, <laughs> the only artist you had? Well, what we should have done was uh, get together, discuss a new strategy, yeah. maybe not make a roguelike with a procedural dungeon generated, because that's yeah. <laughs> quite a tall order. But by that time I had already started on it, so I was invested and I, w I have made this, I'm not going to just yeah. sc scrap it, so we just pushed on. Some sprites that I thought was were just placeholders, like the floor of the dungeon, ended up being not placeholders at all and shipped, the game shipped with it. Mm -hmm. But we well, made do. Yeah. I mean, I played the game, I didn't notice that uh, those problems that you guys are talking about, so <laughs> I guess you guys can go play yourselves and judge. 
<laughs> I, I, I thought the game was fun and I didn't notice any of those problems. I knew that you guys uh, had lost an artist, uh, lost your artist in the process, but I thought the, the sprites were still good. Uh, I couldn't understand all of them, so that's fine by my book. <laughs> uh, and it, the game was pretty. It's not the, the most magnificent uh, art style I've ever seen, but it's good and uh, I think you guys did a good job. So, um, the best moments during the gym, what, what were they? <laughs> I want to hear about those ones. Well, uh, getting the dungeon to work, for me personally, was very fun. It was very good seeing the dungeon actually take shape and being, you know, generating different things each time, but always something that works. So that was very good. And, uh, well, also the moment where we received that email and there's just so much relief that we are, yeah. are actually going to manage to okay. submit that. Well, Personally, well, what I liked the most was like the... I know our, our game is not uh, finished, but I like the, the result of our game. I, I truly like that even though we, we were short-staffed and, we, are, uh, and we didn't have like a, a, an artist who to to put up work yeah i i i like that our game was playable mm -hmm. and it it uh, it didn't how can i say this um he didn't go away from our main theme yeah let's put in there yeah i think i think you guys did a good job like i mentioned before so yeah i agree with that I'm glad to hear that you like the result because that's very important. Uh, at least for us as designers, I, I, I think the best part of a game, for me personally, it's when the game is finished and you like the result because that's very important. Uh, you must like your work, uh, sometimes at least. <laughs> so, uh, thoughts on the gem itself. So, what do you guys think about the game of, uh, of this year? Well, the organization was just can't complain about them yeah. ever again. <laughs> they let us submit uh, late, so all the love to them. In terms of the team, uh, I think you liked it, right? Yes, yes, I did like it. I thought it was not... Uh, I think I would prefer something more focused than just a grab bag of... Here, I have 4,000 possible teams. Pick one or all of them. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm, yeah, yeah I, I, I like what we did with it, so... Yeah, I think that's cool. a recurring thing we see here on the blogs. Uh, normally pl uh, people don't usually like very much when there's too many themes because uh, it's harder to to come up with a concrete idea but yeah i i guess it's for you guys to judge back at home uh, whether you like it or not uh but yeah so what about you home well as i said uh, i like the, the the theme and since we had so much options to choose choosing a more general idea and using a lot of the ideas uh, yeah. for the project was like a uh, more safe bet than focusing on only one mm -hmm. I th okay. and it was more fun yeah well that's that's a positive a positive thing about the the, the multiple themes i guess so uh now on to more personal questions uh this one is for diogo <laughs> so i know you you only did a little bit of the arts um you did some of the sprites like you mentioned but what was it like for you to make the art of the game being a programmer, I usually when I make art for a game, it's usually like a block with legs. <laughs> That's like the extent of my ability. And for this one, I actually managed to put together a bed that looked like a, a bed. <laughs> so it was fantastic. <laughs> I felt like I leveled up. I agree. The bed looked like a bed. I looked at the bed and I understand it was a bad so <laughs> so yeah that's good so Hom this one is for you uh, I know you already talked a little bit about this but what was it like for you to make a game for the first time and uh, maybe tell me a little bit what was it like to work with um, new people and different people and on GBT well I I liked very much because I play games all the time so basically I'm involved with games, uh, I can say like, in like forever, uh, forever no, since I was since I was born, but since a pretty young age, I'm involved with games. And making a game, uh, it's something different. It's 
you you are not just playing something that you like you are playing something that you made and that's something it's it's a, a whole new experience in yeah. My book. yeah i agree that's with it. you i agree with you that's uh, something i really like and I, i'm glad to hear that you like to work on the game uh, that's something we take we take pride on here in, on gdt2 to provide that experience for people mm -hmm. so I already uh, ha know <laughs> about this answer, so. <laughs> but um, do you guys want to keep developing the game? Oh, it does seem that way. We are currently uh, trying to figure out yeah. what we liked about the game, what do we want to build, f wh where do we want to go from what we've made. Yeah. And I must uh, tell uh, that normally when people want to keep developing on the game, um, they should start right away because sometimes it's quite hard to get it get back on uh, it when so much time has passed and you guys did that uh, I, I saw that you were scheduling sessions and you're already working together so I'm glad to hear that you're actually making progress to keep developing I've, the been, game. I've been in that place where you live just like months yeah. after you after you finish the jam game and then you some people want to keep going but the momentum has just completely been lost yeah. and yeah. It's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think you guys did the right thing uh, on this aspect and you guys back at home can wait for a new update on <laughs> Cliché Dungeon. So keep updated to see where it is, uh, where it's going. So my final question for you uh, is, can you give advice to the viewers? What is your advice to the viewers back at home? Submit early. <laughs> yeah. Just and talk to the organization because yeah. they can help you a lot. Communication, people. Communication yeah. and uh, <laughs> playing safe. Basically, those two. Exactly. And if you are an artist, please don't leave your programmers in the <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's, uh, it, it's something that... It, it is good for us programmers to have some mm -hmm. kind of experience on art. So yeah. we can uh, also uh, help the artists getting a view mm -hmm. and understanding how, well, how they are... Uh, working, yeah. Working, but trying to code and learn to make be, art, make yeah. art is a, a very, a very it's, it's a little bit hard, I'd say. Yeah, but I'm glad that, that you saw the positive aspects of this experience because I agree with you. Sometimes, as a programmer, you need to understand uh, what the art team goes through to um, understand mm -hmm. what to ask them yeah and there's okay. like no better learning experience than to be forced to learn yeah, yeah <laughs> it's true it's true so yeah that's it for today thank you guys for coming and as always keep updated check our social media check our other videos and our other vlogs and keep um, yeah keep updated with us so bye <laughs> <laughs>